Hi, I'm Trev Hutchings, and this is how to use the sampler in Cakewalk Sonar. If you don't have the sampler in Cakewalk Sonar, install the free instrument pack in the Cakewalk Product Center. Now to add the sampler, click on the Virtual Instruments icon. Double click on Sampler. Then double click on X Sampler. Then click on OK. Then double click on the Sampler icon on the Sampler track. Now here I've got a sample of my guitar that I recorded earlier. And to add this to the sampler, I'm just gonna drag it down to where it says, drag audio from loop browser, clip panes, or file system. And now that recording has been copied to the sampler. Now the first thing I need to do is set up the root. And this guitar note that I've got in this recorded sample is the note E. And at the moment, the root is set to C3. So if I press on the key C3, That'll play the sample in its original pitch. So I need to move it. So I'm gonna press the left mouse button on where it says C3 next to root and drag up until it says E3. So if I now play the original recording, and then press on E3, it should sound the same. Next, I'm gonna trim this down because I've got some space at the beginning and the end of the recording. So I'm gonna press the left mouse button on the trim marker to the left of the recording and drag it to the right. and then press the left mouse button on the right trim marker and drag to the left. So now when I press E3, I get this. Next, I can do some adjustments to this sample. So I'm gonna click on the show hide controls icon. And the first section we have here is the amp envelope section that changes the sample structure. And if I press on the attack knob and drag up, I will create a fade in to the sample. The release knob sets how long the sound continues to play after I release the key. And at the moment, it's quite short. But if I press on the release knob and drag up, the sound will continue after I release the key.
Now the delay and sustain knobs are connected to each other. So the delay sets how long the volume of the sound will stay at full volume until it goes down to the volume of the sustain. And sustain will set how loud the volume will be after the decay. So if I set sustain to zero, so I'm going to press on the sustain knob and drag down. The only sound we will hear now is controlled by decay. And if I press on the decay knob and drag down, I can shorten the sound. Now, if I press on the sustain knob and drag up, I can set the volume level of the sound after the decay. And at the moment it's at zero. So once the decay is stopped, there is no sustain. But if I press on the knob and drag up, I can now add a lower volume after the delay. And I can adjust these two to make a smooth sound between them. And if you only want one note to play at a time, you can click on the mono toggle to turn mono on. In the pitch section, you can change the pitch of the sound so you can use it to transpose the sound. So if I press on the shift knob and drag up until it says plus one semitone, the pitch of each key will be increased by one keynote. And you can press on the fine knob and drag up or down to adjust the pitch by less than one semitone. The filter section can be used to change the sample tone. At the moment, filter type says none, so there's no filtering. Click on the filter type drop list. Then click on low pass. And now the cutoff knob will remove frequencies that are higher than the cutoff knob setting. The Reso knob will increase the frequencies 
around the cutoff point, which will have the effect of making the sound brighter the more the reso knob is increased. Click on the filter type drop list again and click on high pass and now the cutoff will remove frequencies lower than the cutoff point. Once again, the Rezo knob will increase the frequencies around the cutoff point. Now click on the filter type drop list again and click on band pass. Now the cutoff point will remove frequencies higher and lower than the cutoff point. The time stretch section sets how the sample is played back. While it is set to original, the sample is stretched to the same length when it's pitched for each key. Click on the stretch mode drop list and click on none and the sample will be repitched for each key but the sample will be longer the lower the pitch and shorter the higher the pitch. Also notice that when none is selected the sample is no longer restricted to one octave. Click on the stretch mode drop list again. Now if you click on one of the bar options, it will set the sample length to that bar option. So now if I set the stretch mode to half a bar, the sample will play back over one half of a bar. In the mix section, gain sets the input volume of the sample. Press the left mouse button on the gain knob and drag up to increase the input volume or down to reduce the input volume. Pan moves the sample from left to right inside the stereo mix. With the pan knob set to center, the sample sits in the middle of the stereo mix. Press the left mouse button on the pan knob and drag down to move the sample to the left in the stereo mix or drag up to move the sample to the right in the stereo mix. Audio type sets the logarithm that's used for the stretch. Click on the audio type drop list and you'll see you have three options. 
click on drums if the sound you are using is percussion. Click on vocals if it's a vocal recording. Or otherwise, click on music. You can also click on the drop down menu. Here you can click on normalize sample to normalize the volume level of the sample. Or you can click on reverse sample to play the sample in reverse. Click on Trim Silence, then click on a volume level to reduce the silence by. In this case, I'm going to click on 48 dB to reduce the silence around the sample. This is a sort of automated version of Trim. Finally, you can save your sampler with this sample. So click on the sample name, which currently says no preset, and type in a name for this sampler preset. Then click on save. Now, if I open up a second sampler, if I now go to where it says no preset and click on the drop list arrow, you'll see now I have the option to use the guitar E. And when I click on it, it'll upload the sample. And that is the same sample that we saved in the other sampler. If you enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and click on that subscribe button. Cheers.